Hi, welcome back. We were uh, discussing about the Q potential of a system, which is uh, PV by KT. Q, Q potential is, as we all know, it's a quantity that we defined in the grand partition function, sorry, grand canonical ensemble. So in the grand canonical ensemble, we define this quantity Q potential, which is log of the grand partition function, log of the grand partition function, which is equal to PV by KT. And that is equal to uh, minus sigma epsilon log 1 minus not 1 minus z e to the power minus beta epsilon for the Bose Einstein case and plus sigma epsilon log 1 plus z e to the power minus beta epsilon for the Fermi Dirac case. So there is small error here. The minus sign should uh, come up and plus should go down. Minus for the Bose Einstein case and plus for the Fermi Dirac case. Okay, so this is for the Bose Einstein and Fermi Dirac case. Now we are including Maxwell Boltzmann case also and uh, all these three are combined into a single equation q q potential equal to pv by kt equal to log of grand partition function equal to 1 by a sigma epsilon log of 1 plus a z e to the power minus beta epsilon so when you put a equal to minus 1 the minus sign will appear here and uh, when a becomes minus 1, this also will become negative. So we have this minus sigma epsilon log 1 minus z e to the power minus beta epsilon, which is for the Bose Einstein case. And when you put a equal to plus 1, this will be positive. Here, uh, this also will be positive. And you have this sigma epsilon, sigma epsilon log 1 plus z e to the power minus beta epsilon which is for the Fermi Dirac case and uh, we know for the Maxwell Boltzmann case q potential is z q1 okay z q1 z q1 is the uh, single particle partition function okay z q1 log z that we have seen in the case of Maxwell Boltzmann case. Now if we generalize, uh, if we put a equal to 0 here, yeah, you will get the Maxwell Boltzmann case, the z q1. That can be obtained by put, uh, putting a equal to 0. So when you put a equal to 0, you will have log 1 here in the numerator. So 0 in the numerator and a equal to 0, 0 in the denominator. So 0 by 0 form, the indeterminate form. So uh, it can be evaluated by a hospital's rule. So what do you do is you uh, differentiate the uh, numerator with respect to a. So when you differentiate, since log uh, is there, so uh, when you differentiate you will have 1 by 1 plus a z e to the power minus beta epsilon and uh, uh, you will have uh, z e to the power minus beta epsilon on its uh, top. So z e to the power minus beta epsilon divided by 1 plus a z e to the power minus beta epsilon. Okay. Then uh, in the denominator, when you differentiate with respect to you will have 1. So again you put a equal to 0. So what you will be getting is sigma epsilon z e to the power minus beta epsilon in the numerator. Denominator is 1. And we know sigma epsilon e to the power minus beta epsilon. Sigma epsilon e to the power minus beta epsilon is the partition function, single particle partition function. So uh, you will be getting this 
z sigma epsilon e to the power minus beta epsilon z q1 for the Maxwell Boltzmann case when you put a equal to 0 here. So that is the uh, uh, q potential. So for q potential you have this general relation. Now we want to determine the average number of particles, the average energy and the mean occupation number. Okay, so you are going to calculate the average of certain quantities, the average number of total number of particles in the system, the average energy of the system, the mean occupation number, again the average number of the particle in a given level of energy epsilon. For that uh, we use our usual relation, you know average number of particles is given by sigma rs nr, we put nr here, exponential minus alpha nr minus beta s yes. and in the denominator sigma rs exponential minus alpha nr minus beta s. Yes. This, this, this will give us the average number of particles in the system. Instead of nr here, if you put es, you will get the average or mean energy of the system. And if you put n epsilon here, instead of this, if you put n epsilon here, you will get the mean occupation number, average number of particles in a given level of energy epsilon. Okay. So, average number of particles in the system is given by this that is equal to this is minus dou q by dou alpha this thing is minus dou q by dou alpha why this thing is uh, the grand partition function we know this thing is the grand partition function sigma rs uh, exponential minus alpha and now minus beta here yes that is the grand partition function and what is q potential q potential is that quantity defined by us in the grand partition function sorry in the grand canonical ensemble that is log of this log of the uh, grand partition function so when you work out this thing when you take uh, minus dou by dou alpha of q q is log of set log of this so when you differentiate since we have log of this thing and differentiate it will go down to the denominator and when you uh, differentiate the again with respect to alpha this thing nr will come outside so we have this minus dou q by dou alpha this can be also written as set dou q by set how because we know set this e to the power minus alpha so minus alpha when you take the log when you take the log, log z is minus alpha, minus dou alpha is 1 by z dou z. Okay, minus dou alpha is 1 by z dou z. I think that is clear to you. Okay, so when you put that here, so you, you will have a minus, uh, I mean this minus will get cancelled by this minus. So uh, z dou q by dou z vt and average energy you know that is minus dou q by dou beta when you differentiate this q the log of this quantity okay log of this you know uh, when you differentiate this uh, uh, since you are differentiating with the beta this es will come outside so you have you have this minus dou q by dou beta when z and v are constants and n epsilon the mean occupation number or the average number of particles in a single particle level of energy epsilon that is minus 1 by dou beta dou q by dou epsilon so when you take a dou q by dou epsilon this es es is written in this form sigma epsilon n epsilon epsilon because es no to the total energy of the system for a given distribution set, so sigma epsilon and epsilon epsilon. Here also you can write it in that form. So when you differentiate with respect to epsilon, you need to differentiate with respect to epsilon. 
you know, uh, this minus beta n epsilon will come outside. Minus beta n epsilon will come outside. So, uh, you will have this expression minus 1 by uh, beta dou q by dou epsilon that will give you this expression and the mean occupation number. Okay, so these are the equations that we have to uh, uh, remember that these are the equations for calculating the average number of particles. So, the average number of particles in the system, the average energy, okay, the mean occupation number. So, we are going to apply this. We are going to find the average number of particles that we know it is the set dou q by dou set. Q is this. So, we are differentiating this thing with respect to set, multiplying set. So, set dou by dou set of this dou q by dou set. So, when you differentiate with this with respect to set, you will have 1 by a, 1 by a remains there. Then sigma epsilon, 1 by, okay, 1 plus a z d to the power is a minus beta epsilon. Then when you differentiate, you will have z a z e to the power. Uh, since you are differentiating with respect to z, you will have a e to the power minus beta epsilon, okay, in the numerator. So, uh, I am taking this z into this. So, z a e to the power minus beta epsilon. So, when you, uh, okay, when you um, divide both numerator and denominator by a z, a z a e to the power minus beta epsilon, you will get this expression. Sorry, uh, you are dividing by z e to the power, power minus beta epsilon because this a will get cancelled by this a. This a will get cancelled by this a. So, you, you have z e to the power minus beta epsilon in the numerator. So when you divide both numerator and denominator by z e to the power minus beta epsilon, you will get this. Okay. And average energy, you, uh, you get by differentiating with respect to beta. So, you are differentiating this with respect to beta. So again, 1 by a, okay, now when then uh, 1 by 1 plus a set e to the power minus beta epsilon. So, when you differentiate with respect to beta, you will get a set e to the power minus beta epsilon minus, okay, epsilon that will come outside. A will get cancelled, uh, I will get the, the a will get cancelled and you will have this expression. Mean occupation number, uh, as we saw here, the mean occupation number is minus 1 by beta dou q by dou epsilon. Okay, dou q by dou epsilon. So, we are uh, using that here, minus 1 by beta dou q dou epsilon. So, you, you have to differentiate this with respect to epsilon, okay. You have to differentiate this thing with respect to epsilon. So, uh, when you differentiate, you will have 1 by a. Since uh, you are differentiating with respect to a particular epsilon, um, since uh, a, even though this has a number of terms for different single particle state, you will be uh, taking only one, one term in this because you are taking only a particular epsilon. So, uh, you, when you differentiate, uh, you will get this expression. Okay, so this is the mean occupation number. So, when you differentiate this with respect to epsilon, a particular epsilon, you will have this expression. 1 by z inverse e to the power beta epsilon plus a. And this is identical with the, the uh, n, uh, the most probable value. You know, the most prob probable value is this 1 by e to the power, this e to the power alpha. 